All right, shalom. So before we get going, all honor, praise, and glory be to the Heavenly Father. In the name of His Son, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Wahakwadash Waka. Clean the camera real quick. Yeah, that's better. All right, so um, double honors to the elders over at the Great Millstone who were well. Um, also, Shalom, Wa Barakim, meaning peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. Hopeful elect being the men teaching this truth, the truth of Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, um, in sincerity in the four corners of the earth where we have been spread. Um, also, Shalom to the one third of Israel, all right, the one third being um, those men, women, and children um, that are written to be saved from the destruction. You know, that's written to happen um, here on this earth, but um, mainly here in America. All right. So before we get going, this message is specifically to you so-called Negroes, so-called Latinos, and so-called Native American Indian people. All right. Um, those you spread abroad, um, you are all, in fact, the Israelites of the Bible. All right. You're the people of the book. Um, and this book is for you. Um, it's your heritage, it's your history, you know, and it's ultimately um, your salvation. You know, those of you who come back to your heritage, it's all here. And this is our message specifically to you. All right. So Lord willing, um, through these lessons or through this lesson specifically, you could be edified, you know, and um, ultimately grow in the spirit, you know, and learn something. All right. So go get going. As you can see, I got the... um. The image pulled up here, and it's the, uh, the objects and mirror are closer than they appear. All right, so, you know, ultimately this lesson is, um, you know, just, just going to be going into how, um, you know, the things that are in your mirror, you know, when you're looking in the, the mirror here, you're looking behind you, that rear view, um, things that you have left behind you, you know, to ultimately pursue this, um, pursue the truth. You know, you, you were once in the world, all right, and then you, um, found out, you know, that the world was a lie, it was a scam, you know, everything was deception. So you came into the truth ultimately because you were probably looking, you know, for, um, reality. All right. So you gave up on a lot of things. You know, you know, fake um, hopes and dreams, things that you thought that you were going to be obtaining to within the world that, you know, had no real dealings, you know, nothing that was real. It wasn't anything. It was all vain, you know, so you come into the truth and you're still in the world. You still live in the world. Not that you're part of the world, but yet you still are living in the world. And um, ultimately, all those things you let go, they're very, they're still in close proximity. You know, physically, mentally, you have left those places, but, you know, those things are still lingering, if you will, right? So you might have had to change your, um, your eating habits, you know? No crab and lobster, right? You still can be driving down the street and you see a red lobster, you see? Those things, they're, they're closer than they appear. You might have, like, yeah, I'm over that, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, those things, they, they still linger. They're still right there. And they're closer than they appear. And um, we understand that um, Satan, he's, all, he's constantly at work. He's constantly deceiving. He's constantly commercials. You see, those things are close. You could turn the TV on. You know, we might be watching something. Even at YouTube at this point, the commercials. You know, Red Lobster commercial pop up. Bubblegum shrimp commercial pop up, you see, and that was maybe a um something that you dealt with in the world heavy, you know, and it's like a teaser, it's like teasing you because ultimately you're still in the world, and these things that you have to leave behind that are of the world, they're still in close proximity because again we were left to be in the world. All right, so. That's sort of what this lesson is going to, um, just realizing and keeping that um, reminder on yourself that you're going to be constantly tested by the world when you come into the truth. The world is going to constantly be trying to throw things at you to lure you back in, to drag you back in. 
right? You came into the truth, you had to give up pork. Baconated commercial, come on. You see? Um, you know, for those of you who have problem or who in the world were um were eating pork, you know. I mean personally for me, no, I wasn't even before the truth, I wasn't eating pork, but that was just how I grew up. But I'm just giving examples just to, you know, make the point. You know, you might live right next door to a Wendy's. You see? You're right next to these things. You're amongst these things. So those objects in mirror are closer than they appear. And it might even be your ways, people that you hung out with, people that you still may see. You know, you and the truth, you might tell them, no, I'm cool, I'm not, I ain't trying to go do this, I ain't trying to go do that. They might come to you, you know, one of the guys, you know, saying you might used to smoke in the world. You know, you, you randomly walking down the street, you run into one of the guys, you know, he hands you the blunt, you know what I'm saying? So those objects, they're, they're right there. You're still amongst the world. So it's just a reminder that you got to build yourself to um, be able to turn these things down, right? To turn those things off, shut them down. Because you're going to be tested, you know? Um, so we go get into it. We go, um, get a few scriptures. I don't think this is going to be too long. First thing we'll get, we'll get that. Matthew chapter 17, verse 15, you know? And it says... So like not Matthew chapter 17 and St. John. St. John chapter 17. Um, hop to 15. It reads, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. You see the Lord, this these these are red letters, meaning this is um Yahweh Shai speaking, who the world eagerly calls Jesus. He's praying, he says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. So he's praying that we don't be taken out of the world. Again, we're going to be amongst the world and all of those, all of these things that we have to leave behind there, they're in close proximity. They're very close. They're still, you know, close by, you know. It might even be an attitude that you had to obtain, right, to put up with the world. You know, you treat the world a certain way. You might have to shake and maneuver, you know, be Jake. You got to um, supplant. You might have to supplant the world so much, but you don't want to bring that same mentality towards the brotherhood. You know what I'm saying? And it's just because these are things you have to work with to obtain and stay um, steadfast in this truth until we get up out of here. But all of these things are little things that might be distracting. Distracting you from being the best you could be in this truth. Distracting you from fully um, obtaining, fully realizing you know, the scriptures, because that's what we're hearing the truth for. We're here to realize this book. We're here to take it, live it, you know. The brother, um, Shariat, he got a, a a great way of um, saying this. It's like, he say, like, is it is it um your life in the truth, or is it the truth as your life? You know, and that's paraphrasing, but it's somewhere along those, that, those phrases. And once you become to understand that mentality like that, um, your life should be the truth, or your life is this truth. You see, your life is the dark, are these scriptures. That's where you should be at with it. It shouldn't be my life and then the truth. Because when you're doing that, you're you're pretty much um you're stuck in an in-between point. And it's making all of those things that you know you might have dabbled with in the world, it's making them that much easier um to be right there in your face, to be pulling you, to be dragging you back. Because those objects in that river, those things that you thought you threw behind you, they're still close, according to the scripture here. Because it says, I pray not that thou shouldest take us them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep it, keep them from the evil. You see, the Lord just prayed that we were kept away from the evils. And those things that are tugging you back, or those are all the evils that he's praying that we are all kept from. So with him saying this, we know the evil is going to be there. We know we're going to be tempted. We know we're going to be tried. You know, and sometimes you just need to be reminded that all oh, these things happen. And they happen to everybody. Some people are more subject. Some people have a harder time of leaving that behind. 
some people might be having to, um, they might try to take that, 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 um, that trip real quick, you know, go to Wendy's, you know, grab, grab a Baconator one more time. You see, that's all folly though, man. That's going to get you destroyed. You know, lying, you might, you might've had a problem with lying in the world. You come, you lie in the world so much that you come around the brothers and you lie. You, you supposedly put that off. You thought you put it off. You end up catching yourself in the middle of a lie in front of the brothers, lying to your brothers. And it happens. You see? And that's these things that you have to um, consider about yourself. Consider these things because they're, they're, they're here. It's apparent. And they happen. So the Lord's praying that we we are not taken out of the world, but that we should be keep kept from the evil that's here. So that's what we have to pray for. We have to pray that we kept from those evil, those evil ways, those evil things. You know, everything that you put in your rear view that you couldn't bring forward with you into the truth. Because when you step on the other side, if you will, when you go and leave the world, you forsake it. And you come into the truth, you're supposed to be following that straight gate. Right? It's a straight road that we're heading on. You know, we have the road play. We have the map. You know, we have the actions we have to take. Everything's written out. All we have to do is perform. We perform what this book said, and then we realize it. We make it a real thing. We make our lives the book or the book our lives, however you want to put it. But that's what we're pursuing. We're not having one thing and then the other. We're not having a life and then this. We're trying to be in sync because that straight gate is only one way. There's only one way and it's plain and simple and it's written out already. You don't even have to think. You just have to do. You have to learn. You know, you have to obtain the knowledge so you can um be wise and, you know, um, ultimately play out the works. Do. Be a doer. You know, not a talker. This is Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. And this is, again, red letters. So this is Yahweh Shai speaking, you know, through the world, ignorantly calls Jesus. Um, he says, enter ye in at the straight gate. You see, that's a commandment. That's where you need to enter in. You know, you're coming into the truth. You just got off the road. You just left the world. You need to be entering in at the straight gate. You see, because it says, for wide is the gate. And broad is the way. So it's talking about a wide and a wide gate in a broad way. When you go into wide and you go into broad, um, it goes into open. You know, it's 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 you could you can almost put the word chaos in it. Anything can happen. It's wide. It's so much space that anything can happen. You see? You can count on um when you're in the world, this is really likening, this is very much likening to the world. You never know what you're going to run into in the world. Because cause most people, they don't have a, a purpose. You know, they don't have um, something they sit down and focus on and do. And even if they do, it's um something wicked, something that's leading them to destruction. You see, you can juke, you know, be all over the place in the world. Like, say you're having a bad day. You know, in the world, most people, when they have bad days, they stressed out what they go do. They roll up. They go grab a blunt. They sit back. You see, they don't deal with their problems. That's a wide gate. You can not deal with what's in front of you. You don't have to deal with what's in front of you. You can just, you know, sit back and smoke and forget about it or not deal with it at all. Um, it's, it's all types of examples you can go into. You can lie. You can lie to this person, lie to this person, and nobody's going to hold you accountable because they don't have this. You see, those are all that, that wide gate. You can lie so much. You can lie to this person. You can bounce over here and be over here and lie to this person. And that's how you can um, obtain your life in the world by based upon lies. And that's just one way, you know. You could be eating all the most abominable food in the world. You can eat a red lobster one day. You could eat a... Wendy's one day, it's all abomination. All these options, all these different ways to go. There's no direction. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And all of these ways, because there aren't truly a way, they're leading to destruction. Ultimately, because they have no end. 
They have no endpoint. They have no direction. It's wide. You can go here. You can go here. You can go anywhere. You know, think about a track. A track might have eight lanes. It's really wide, but each lane, when you're running, you're supposed to stay in one lane. Those lanes are straighted. You know, you, you can't run all over the track. You will get disqualified. And that's exactly what this is saying. You can't be wide on a, in the track, in the track meet. You can't use all the lanes. You can't be just swerving in and out. Specific races, you know, for those who know. But anyway, it says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. So yeah, wide and broad way is going to lead you to destruction. And it says, and many there be which go in there at. So there's going to be many people walking in through that wide gate. And why? It's because there's so many options there. There's no there's no rules. People don't like to deal with rules. People want to make up their own rules. They want to go their own way. So they hop on the wide gate. And according to the scriptures, that's going to lead to the destruction. And then we know this to be true because there's going to be many people that go that way. And most people, you know, they're on that wide gate. Verse 14, it says, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way. So straight and narrow. Like again, like I said, just like that track. In a track, you have those lanes. Each lane is straight and narrow. There's only one way you can go. You can't be in lane two if you're supposed to be in lane one. You can't be in lane five if you're supposed to be in lane three. It's a straight and narrow way, a straight head. Whatever obstacle, say you got a hurdle there. You know, think about the hurdles. You got to hop over that hurdle. You can't hop over the next person's hurdle. You have to hop over the hurdle that's in front of you. You can't stop, sit back, like this hurdle hop. I'm about to roll up. I'm about to, I don't even want to try it. You see? You got to go over that hurdle or through it. You got to figure it out. But whatever it might be, that's what comes on this straight gate. It's straightforward. There's one way. And you're going to deal with what's in front of you. But the beautiful thing is you have direction and instruction. To um, help you get through. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. See, these straight and narrows are going to lead you to life. You're going to learn. You're going to bump your head on the way. You're going to fail, but you're going to get up. Paraphrasing the scriptures, it says, A wise man, you know, falls down seven times, but get up. It says, and Few there be that find it. There's going to be few people on this straight gate. And you understand that um, being the truth and knowing. That is very few people who who adhere, who have ears to hear, you know, the eyes to see, you know, like they they actually come into this thing and are diligent. Most of the world isn't doing this. So the straight gate leads into life, and there's gonna be few that find it. Alright? So it's, it's simply put, that straight gate, and plus when you're when you're um when you're focused on being straight, you're not looking back to your folly. You're not looking back. Yes, you're going to um, examine yourself, you know. You're commanded to examine yourself so you can think about things you might have did in the past. You're going to meditate on those things, meditate on the actions, you know, to improve yourself. But you're not going to be going back to those ways. You know, you're not going to, go on, you're not going to be going back to go visit Red Lobster because you've seen the commercial. Because it's right next to you. It's right up the street. You're not going to be going to get that Baconator from Wendy's. Because you live right next door to it. You're not going to be lying um, to, to everybody around you. You see, because you have instruction and you're heading straight. You're going to be heading straight forward. You're not going to be worried about that rear view. Because those objects in that rear view, they're close. But they're only there if you're looking that way. If you're worried about that rear view. We're going to get the um, next scripture. Um, probably just get a few more and close out. Um, see, it's Proverbs chapter 26. Yeah, verse 11. Proverbs chapter 26 and 11. It says, as a dog return it to his vomit. Right? So a dog, an animal, you know, not even a human. It's a dog, you know. And, um, you can say real quick, a heathen. A heathen is likened to a dog. But it says, as a dog return it to his vomit, right? So a fool return it to his folly, right? So if you're a man or if you're someone um, that's considered a fool, you, 
and you're going back to ways that you know are wrong, things that you know are against um, the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, things that are um, opposing to this truth, you're going to be likened it to a dog, man. Likened it to a four-legged animal who goes back and actually enjoys eating its vomit after it throws it up. Food or something within its stomach or body, it digests it and rejects it, so it came up. You know, a dog goes back and it licks it up and it enjoys that taste. It wants it. A dog will go do that over and over again. A dog will throw up and lick up his vomit. You see? And that's how you are liking. That's what you're liking to. You're liking, you're like, you're reckoned to be a fool and you're liking it to a dog that goes back and lick up his vomit. And that's a fool to turn into his folly. That's you going back into, that's you looking into that rear view and wanting to go back and going to whatever it may be if you've done, you know? Whatever it may be that goes against um, the words of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, that you were once doing, that you know better not to do, that you're going to go back and do. You see? So a fool, return it to his folly. You're liking it to a dog, man. So we go get this last song. Um, last scripture here to um, close this thing out. Second Peter, um, I believe it's chapter two. Yeah. We'll start at 20. It says, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shahamashiach. So it says, so after. So you have escaped the pollutions of the world. You've escaped all of the folly of the world. You know, all the wrongness, all the evil, all the wickedness of the world. You know, you came into the truth. You hopped on a straight gate. It says, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah Mashiach. So you receive knowledge. You were taught. You know better. You know right from wrong. It says, they are again entangled therein. So when you, you look at that rear view mirror, you, you're enticed. You want to go back. Matter of fact, you do go back. Right? You're entangled therein and overcome. You overcome by the world. That commercial got you. You know, Red Lobster put that commercial one more time and he was like, you know what? I'm about to go back. I'm about to go get me a lobster. You know, and I'm just keeping it super simple, just, you know, for the simplicity of the video. It says, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. So your latter end ends up being worse than what you were when you were in the world. Why is worse? Because you know better. In the world, there's a possibility you didn't know better. You knew you wasn't supposed. You know now that you're not supposed to be eating. In the world, you possibly didn't know. You wasn't ever taught. You were never told what was right and what was wrong. You know, so you have a chance. But now that you know, you have no business doing. And your and your um latter end is worse with them than the beginning. It says, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. So it'd be better for you to not even learn these things if you're going to go back into the world eventually. It's better to never got the knowledge. If you're going to decide to take a peek in that review and want to go back and get those things, you know, not to examine yourself, not to meditate on them and learn through, but to actually go back and retrieve those things that you so-called left behind you. It says, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than then, after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them, to turn from this, to turn from your true power, to turn from your true heritage, to turn from true life, actual life, not life that the world offers you, but real true life, you know, salvation, you know, understanding, true understanding, you know, not just lies, you know, coming to something that's real. Because that's probably why you came into the truth is because you wanted to obtain true life. You wanted something real, possibly. You know, that's if you're sincere, you know, but you're going to be going back. You go look into that review. You go see those things and they're going to um, light up to you and you're going to want those things. It says it's better that you didn't know the truth in the first place. But verse 22, it says, but it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. You know, which we just read, it says the dog has turned to his own vomit again. So, you know, once, once you 
once you come into this truth, man, you have to really learn to be diligent. You have to learn how to contain yourself. You have to learn how to keep yourself out of the way of danger for yourself, you know, you know, for your own sake, for you to grow so you can truly obtain, so you can truly make these scriptures true and, cor and um, correct yourselves, you know. And again, I'm going to say, you're going to fall. You're going to fail sometimes, man. But when you go back and you know better and you on, um, you, you, you licking up your vomit, you know you're liking it to a fool. And the Lord, um, he says, he says, those who, those who um, hate me, you know, they love death. And the love of the Lord is to just simply do his commandments. All right. So, remember, they go back to the, um, to the image, or just, um, just to, you know, pull it on point through. It says, objects and mirror are closer than they appear. So, you know, watch out. Watch out for those objects in the mirror, man. Because those are the things that are likely to um, pull you back into the world. Those are the things that are going to likely distract you, you know, from obtaining, from um, moving forward, from um, actually realizing this book, you know, it's going to distract you, it's going to make you waste your time and lose your time, so, Lord willing, you know, this was edifying, but with that said, I'm going to close out, I'm going to say Shalom.